Hi, it's uh, Bruce, and welcome to my Colorado Rocky Mountain Lab again. And uh, what we're going to take a look at today is a project where I uh, cobbled together a, a 10.0000 quad zero volt reference uh, standard. Now, a lot of times I find that I, I need a, a stable reference source of something that goes better than a millivolt. So in this case, we go down to a hundred microvolts. And uh, I use it then for calibration purposes or testing. And uh, they're not that easy to come by. So, uh, however, uh, it takes very little effort to, to buy a, an inexpensive board make a modification to it and, uh, and you can provide yourself a reference that's stable long enough that you can do whatever you need to do. Uh, I'd say that this thing once calibrated will hold its uh, calibration generally um, uh, for about a day uh, and then your uh, 100 microvolt area may start to drift a little bit but uh, uh, it'll, it'll maintain the millivolts for matter of maybe a week. Uh, I've seen very, I've had to, to uh, readjust this thing very little, uh, but I, since I do have to adjust it, I made a calibration hole on the top, and we'll talk about that as we get into the video. So we're going to take, we're going to open this thing up, and we're going to give you a look at the insides of it, and you'll see that it's a relatively easy and inexpensive uh, uh, project. So bear with me. Okay, well, I've opened up the case for this uh, 10 point quad zero reference unit, and we're going to remove the, uh, the board, the module. And this is a standard module that you'll find on eBay a lot of places, and I think it, it runs oh, several dollars. It's really not that expensive. But the trick here was. Uh, the installation of an additional few circuit elements to provide um, some trimming. So what I've got here is a uh, it's a thousand ohm resistor here, trim resistor. It's a ten turn pot. All of this was on the um, tear sheet for the this uh, analog devices uh, 584L. If you take a look, they they have a additional uh, diagram in there that uh, shows you how to do this. If you're very careful, you can do it. I glued the pot to the, uh, to the bottom of the board, provided standoffs on it, and then uh, mounted the board in this case in such a way that, uh, that the jack for the power can be reached. Ah, excuse me, goes this way. And I can also uh, adjust the pot through a hole in the top up here. So I can calibrate the unit while it's enclosed. A couple of terminals and a switch. Really nothing more to it. Here's the circuit on the tear sheet for the AD584. We see that it's that 1K resistor is really a, a 10K pot, and then we got a 300K uh, resistor that connects to pin 3 and goes to the center terminal of the pot, and then the left and right hand sides go to terminals 1 and 4, and uh, that's it. That's your adjustment then. says that you can get about 200 millivolts range out of that. It's worked well for me. You, uh, you can actually calibrate it to within four decimal places. It will not keep it, not for long, I mean, a few days. But it will, uh, it will also be considerably better than it is without it. Uh, and that's permanent. I mean, I, I, haven't, uh, I haven't had to make an adjustment to it, and it's still way better than it was uh, uh, without the trim. So, I recommend doing the adjustment. All right. Okay, well, we've got the 10-volt reference back uh, together again. 
we've powered it up uh, from this little wall wart and low noise power supply that I'm working on. Um, it provides roughly, I don't know, 14 volts, I think, to this unit. Um, and we see that we are getting 10.0000 volts. So I did make a tweak earlier, but uh, it's it's holding it long enough as you, that you can certainly see it. It'll hold that probably for the next few hours. But nice, uh, nice little handy reference to have available. Okay.